Good morning, sir. Yes, and how are we? Uh, God's grace, we are fine. Nice. I, I just cannot hear myself. Uh, it's fine. I'm hearing. It's fine. You can yes. hear me. Okay. Can, the right. world can hear you. You're fine. Okay. All right. So far, how far? So far, so good. Uh, I am happy that for some time now, when we are about going for elections, media houses, uh, governments, everyone is now showing interest in the arts fraternity. Um, now, I see that uh, the top parties have representation for, for, for their, their, their parties. And they are talking about the plans and manifestos that they have for the creative industry. For those of us who have been around for some, for some time, we know this was not the norm about 20 years ago. Mm. And so I just want to say thank you to the media for putting this together. The leaders of the parties are watching, they are listening. Mm. And it is for, for the art industry and for Ghana. Mm. So I am excited. I find myself here. I, I heard you before you became a deputy minister. I hear you these days. If I ask you to assess yourself and your minister, and your ministry has had four different ministers, my memory serves me right. We've had Catherine Afeku. Yeah. We have had Barbara Ting Jesse. Yeah. We have had uh, Dr. Uh, well. Ahmed Awal. Yeah. And now we have Andrew Ejapamesa. Four ministers at that ministry over the eight year period, or almost eight year period. What would you say has been your achievement, key assessment? Okay, I think that um, President Ekufuado's government has done so well when it comes to the tourism, art, and culture ecosystem. Um, before we came to power, the tourism numbers uh, were relatively low. Uh, with year of return beyond the return, mm. we've increased the numbers. Not to where we want to get to, mm. but to be able to make 1.1 million in 2019. We dropped in 2020 because of the obvious reason, mm -hmm. uh, COVID. 2021, we started crawling back. And this year, I know that we will hit our target over the 1.1 million visitors. Mm. Domestic tourism relatively has grown because we, we've launched uh, Experience Ghana. I leave this room to go and launch Tourism Month, mm. which is September. Right. And we, ha we have a number of programs. And I think it should begin with uh, Afashe. Because mm -hmm. this weekend is Cape Coast Afashe. Yes. And so with, with tourism, easier to keep the data because it is, we have the Ghana Tourism, tourism, mm. tourism Board, which has become Ghana uh, Tourism Authority now. Over the years, they are better structured than the Creative Art Agency and the National Film Authority. Mm. If you come to the creative side, uh, we've given the industry law. I've seen that the industry itself is not putting so much weight on the law. But the challenges that we've had in this industry over the years is because there was no regulation of the industry. How comfortable do you feel as a long-standing music producer who's made a name in the industry that not a single recording studio that was promised by your government is up and running for a musician who is budding, who can walk into it and say, I want to record a demo and it will be done for them. How comfortable do you feel? It is not comfortable because I am the crusader of the studio agenda. I am the one who started that, uh, um, that idea that managed to find itself in the manifesto mm. in 2020. So if you watch in 2017, in 2016, it was not in the manifesto. Right. It appeared in 2020. Right. Because I had started that. But we're almost four years, yes. full cycle. How comfortable do you feel? Okay. That there's not even one up and running. It is yes and no. Because if you could go and pick some of my audio in my days at Hit FM, mm. the industry fought against it. It is explicit. It is public knowledge. It was all over. Mm. I can quote some of them like appear to somewhere for, somewhere against, but the against were higher than the four. And so for those of us who have seen some of our big men go to prison uh, because of causing financial loss to the state, we decided to play it safe by not taking the so, risk. So the bottom line you're saying is what? The bottom line is that if the industry shows interest that 
they've changed their minds that we should build. Why not? We'll You're saying that the industry people don't want the studios you want to build for yes, them yes, yes, yes. and charge them cheaper fees? Yes, they, re record. they rejected. You can quote me anywhere, anytime. They rejected and said we should share the money amongst them because they already have studios that were doing well. I you see. can quote me again. Nasi, a few weeks ago, was on Hit FM. He went to um, Peace FM again. Mm. He was asked. And Nasi said that at the time he supported, but he mm. feels that now mm. we don't need it. He said that? Yes. A I few see. weeks ago. Nasi said it. What, what's holding the amphitheaters from being completed? Okay. The amphitheater. I, I need very brief answers. Okay. Frankie yeah. has given us the preambles. Okay. I, I own the amphitheater concept too. So you should give me more time. Frankie will give you peripheral. I'll give your, you the call. Your, your colleagues will, will want to ask questions. So. Okay. Before Thank I leave? No. Oh, they will ask them. Okay, okay. Okay, so the amphitheaters are about 70% done. Mm. I hear my, my big brother Rex said, uh, we, can't, we cannot finish. Rex, uh, Sadiq, my brother Sadiq challenged mm. me with the 2020, the law of the Creative Art Bill said, and said that if we are able to finish by end of year, mm -hmm. we should change his name from Sadiq to Adiza. And so we did it before the end of 2020. So I, mm -hmm. I nicknamed him Adiza. Rex Omar is also daring us again mm -hmm. and said we cannot finish the amphitheaters. It's 70% done. You call him Abiba? His wife is actually Abiba. <laughs> Mm. So if I call him Amiba, I think it's not out of place. Where is the Creative Arts Fund? He said that it's in the law, and the law is in the works, and it's lying on your table. Where is it? Is that what he said? He said it's in the me. works. He said, he said it's going to Parliament. Attorney General's business But who will, send, who will send it? Attorney General will have to present well, it. Well, but he, they, they will have to formulate it. There's a way laws, where laws are created. You know it yeah. as a deputy minister. So where are we now? In that process come again where yes, are we sir. now the creative Wait, arts fund where are we now? okay the fund yes okay you know i'm happy you mentioned the law the fund has its roots from the law which is the the creative arts act right good and so you establish the organization and the organization will give birth to the fund mm. we are about recruiting for the creative arts agency this month. Yesterday, Focap came to our office to meet the minister himself. Mm. He's giving them his word. When the office begin to, begins to run, mm. the Creative Art Fund is supposed to get its establishment from the office. Unfortunately, the challenge is that tourism has a fund. Mm. The law was not made by us, but they have a fund which is running beautifully. Mm. NFA, Film Authority, mm -hmm. their law or the act was, the, the bill was passed into an act by the previous government, the mm -hmm. NDC, in 2016, a few months to the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. That law also gave room for a fund. And then the Creative Arts Agency also has a fund. You know these funds, if you are taking some of the amount, some will come from government and some will come from industry people. Somehow, it is a degree of taxation. So one ministry has three different units. All of them are taking some sort of tax. But he's given us assurance that by the time Parliament rises this year, yes. the fund will be set up. Yes. Do you buy into that idea? Do you endorse that? Do you confirm that as deputy minister for the sector? That, that is what it's supposed to be. But let me finish. Let me finish. He runs an agency. I, I, I come from a you ministry. You supervise him. Yes. Yes. So, so I'm asking his boss. Yes. That's what I said. Talk to me. I'm the Yes, call. that's what I'm talking to Correct. you. Correct. So when is the, the thing coming? I am telling Chika you. Maybe, Baba. I am telling you, Daniel journalists, you like to do hard talk journalism. Let me finish. It's our work. Let me also do Not my Not BBC work. hard talk. You called me to answer questions. We so don't have too much time. So that's why, why, I'm, go, why, that's why I'm appealing go. to you. Okay, good. Mm. I like that. And so what we are trying to do is that how do we merge these three funds okay. that sit within one ministry? Because only hoteliers, only, only uh, tourism, they take about, the, the hoteliers are complaining that they take about seven forms of collection right. from them, hoteliers. And mm. that's their complaint. So you can imagine if we keep 
asking industries to pay money into three different units. Why don't we merge? I don't think I don't think you want to answer my question. He said by the time parliaments rise this this year, and I, the, I, the I, fund I, will be ready. And I, you I, have told me about the checkered way in which the area is governed in terms of fund mobilization. Mm -hmm. But he has told us, you are his boss. Yes. So what is the final verdict? Will it be done by parliament by the time they rise? Or will we have to wait and reinvent the process all over again? Because that is what it is okay. if we rise. Okay. Are you aware parliament makes the laws? Mm. They, they make the laws. Right. Are you aware I can amend whatever I want to amend through parliament mm. and cabinet? Right. And I'm telling you that Per the agency's level, they want to have this thing go. Okay. And per Honorable Ejapamesa's viewpoint, why don't we get all these three units to merge so that we can go back to Parliament and make amends? So it's not going to happen this year? It can't happen. Okay. But Thank the you. reason why I am giving you conditional statement is that you do not have control, direct control over Parliament. What okay. do you decide? I, I agree with you. Yes. And, and so it's clear that it's not going to happen. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Is that what I said? Don't misquote me. What did you say? This is an unfair. Sorry. Right in front of me, you are misquoting no, so me. No, I'm saying that. Just, just like somebody just said, Kakum, uh, we just, is not we just, fixed. Honorable, we, we just, just like want that. a timeline from you. Because now... We are going round and round in circles. I am telling you that. And deciding why we should not go round and round in circles. Governance is not about saying verbatim, saying that I will do this and it happens. Because checks and balances, because of the three units, executive, right. judiciary, and legislation, you, you make a move, but somebody must concretize it before it becomes whatever you want it to become. So do we have a And I'm telling line? you that, yes, parliament is, will, will sit for the last time. And I'm telling you that this is what we are considering. How do we get all these three units considering? Considering. On a certificate of urgency? Yes. Okay. So we are, this is what we are considering. So yesterday, this man sitting by me met us. Mm. And I remember one minister told him, he says he's going to take a document to cabinet. So we should prepare a document for him to present to president. Mm. Just yesterday. So, but all in all these processes, if I come and sit here and say, give me by December will be ready or give me by october and it's mm. ready you will come back already people want to tag us liars and come mm. and say that you remember you told us this okay it's okay it's, uh, we didn't get the timeline so uh, so thank i you can't very give you timeline a round of applause for our minister thank you very much we didn't get the timeline but yeah